Hello wonderful person and welcome to Proxima Centauri B. Now this is going to be another video about this beautiful planet very very close to our own solar system that's only about 4.2 light years away from us. This is actually our closest neighbor and closest exoplanet that's very very similar to our own Earth. But in today's video we're actually going to focus on something a little bit different. We're going to investigate the idea of this being a habitable world and we're going to simulate various types of uh, terrestrial planets that this world might actually be and see if it's actually really habitable. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in October of 2016, there was actually a paper by the French National Center for Scientific Research, also known as CNRS. And this paper basically investigated the idea of this being um, not only a terrestrial planet and not only being an um, Earth-like planet, but being a habitable world. And they did this by basically changing various parameters of the planet and investigating what would actually become if it was a different type of a planet. What would actually change, what would it look like, and what it might actually um, sort of resemble. Now, first of all, you can see that right away, as soon as we give this planet water, it actually forms a liquid layer. This is, of course, because it uh, so happens that this particular planet is located in the so-called habitable zone of Proxima Centauri. As a matter of fact, we got really lucky. So the closest star to us actually obviously has um, a terrestrial planet or possibly an Earth-like planet that seems to be in the um, region where there might be liquid water. So that's good, that's great. But it doesn't actually mean that there might be liquid water here. Um, one of the reasons why we're not entirely sure if there's liquid water is because um, there could be so many different possibilities for how this planet may have been formed and what is actually on the inside of it. So this particular study investigates various characteristics of various um, planets that could have formed um, by looking at the variation of composition of um, various uh, planets when they're formed and pr proposing different extremes. So here we're going to actually investigate these extremes and see what this world might look like if it's one of those extremes. So let's start with the first proposition that they actually came up with. And this is, of course, if this planet is very, very similar to our own um, Mercury, or basically it's a planet that's um, almost uh, entirely made up of iron. Specifically here, the maximum that we could possibly have is about uh, 60 or so percent. And essentially almost no water and possibly um, very, very little rock. And this, uh, even with the um, 1.3 masses of Earth, would actually give us a size that's even smaller than our own planet Earth. So this would actually be smaller than Earth because it's actually a lot more dense. So this would be a very, very dense world. Uh, density here is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube, which is um, almost one and a half times higher than Earth. And this would be basically very similar to Mercury. So this would be a planet that may actually um, have a very interesting composition. But for all we know, because it has so much metal on the inside, just like Mercury, it might actually have something that we need for survival. And that something is, of course, the magnetic field. So let's give this planet a little bit of a magnetic field just so it can actually um, protect the planet from the dangerous solar radiation of Proxima Centauri. Um, and if it's anything like Mercury, it might actually also have quite a lot of different formations on the surface, so like specifically here we're talking about collisions. So let's recreate those as well. Let's add some um, asteroids here and create a kind of a interesting jagged surface of uh, this new planet Proxima Centauri. Now the thing that we don't really know is if there is liquid water. If it's uh, actually in the habitable zone, if it, if it actually does have um, the layer of magnetic field here, um, it would very likely be able to protect the liquid water from the radiation of Proxima Centauri. In other words, it might actually have liquid water that we're going to add right now to the surface here. So for all we know, maybe this is actually what this world looks like. Let's cool it down, let's wait a little bit and take a look at what it actually might look like. And so here we go. Uh, maybe, just maybe, this is what it actually does look like. The only problem with this world is that, of course, um, because it's so close to the um, main star, Proxima Centauri, it might be actually tidally locked. In other words, it's always facing the same direction. So here, as you can see, all, the same direction is always facing the star, which would imply that 
unless there's some kind of a really extreme exchange between atmosphere um, on one side and the other side, or unless water can somehow um, transfer heat across the planet, one side might be super, super hot, one side might be super, super cold, and only um, this side right here, the twilight area, would actually provide um, enough sort of temperature to uh, maintain liquid water, whereas the rest of this planet would probably be dry or frozen. Uh, so this is because it's tidally locked. But if it's not tidally locked, which is somewhat unlikely, the scenario might be very different and it might actually just look like what you see on, this, on your screen right now. And so the main difference here between um, Earth and this planet is that, well, first of all, it's uh, tidally locked. Second of all, the gravity here is a little bit higher. It's about 13.4 meters per second square, uh, which is about 1.5 times higher than on Earth. And that's because it's mostly metal on the inside. And third of all, um, this might be a quite an extreme sort of planet with potentially very, very powerful magnetic field. And this might be actually an ideal world for us if it's not too hot on one side and if there is actually a twilight area where we could actually survive. And of course, if the liquid water was actually protected from the radiation of the main star. Now, situation number two is a little bit different. And in the second situation here, um, this would be a case where there is actually quite a lot of water and this is actually a, not a very dense world at all. It, as a matter of fact, it's a very, very bubbly and watery world. So this would be a situation where something like 50% of the entire planet is actually made up of water. And this is what you would actually have on the surface. So um, it's currently frozen, but it technically should actually warm up any second and melt all of this ice. And here we go. There is your water world known as Proxima Centauri B. So this is a world that's essentially 50% water, a little bit of rock underneath. There's a tiny rock core and a tiny metal core as well. Now, this is almost entirely the opposite of the previous Proxima Centauri B. And this is a planet that's um, essentially uh, about one or two times bigger than our own Earth, but has um, much smaller surface gravity of about uh, 6.8 meters per second square, which is about um, 1.4 times smaller. And for us, this actually implies that something is protecting this water uh, from essentially being disintegrated by the super powerful radiation from Proxima Centauri that's very, very close to us. And that something is very likely to be, um, once again, magnetic magnetosphere. So maybe, just maybe, this is actually another case of magnetosphere and uh, something's protecting this planet, but unfortunately it is a water world, meaning that we actually have to bring spaceships that can actually float on the water and create islands, because it's very unlikely that any land would actually be visible here, unless there is a super, super ultra tall mountain uh, that is basically like thousands of kilometers big and can actually stick out from one of the um, areas somewhere here, but it's very, very unlikely to, to be that big. But because there is so much water here, um, even though it's always facing the same side of, um, of the star, it's very, very, very likely that the water here circulates really fast because the um, heating of the water on this side and the cooling of the water on that side will always circulate around, creating quite a lot of various currents and possibly even other really extreme water effects, um, such as some really, really cool surf, which means that this is possibly a very, very awesome water world that we should uh, one day try to explore. But other than that, I'm not sure if we'll be actually able to settle here for a long time because we would simply be unable to actually live um, on the liquid surface of this planet because it's just not very habitable. And of course, this also depends on, on the atmosphere, but for water to exist there, uh, there would need to be atmosphere. And if there is no atmosphere, this is what would happen. So without the atmosphere, unfortunately, the temperature will start decreasing to below zero, and this would actually turn into an, an ice world, very, very similar to um, moons like Europa and Ganymede. So maybe it's just that. Maybe it's a frozen world with no atmosphere, which means that we probably should not go, go here at all. But also between these two extremes, there is, of course, another possibility, and that possibility is something that's very, very similar to our own Earth. Now, let's just try to recreate this from scratch, and I'm going to show you how to do this. You take a random rocky planet, put it here. Um, we're going to go and rename it into Proxima Centauri uh, B. We're going to give it 1.3 masses of Earth, which is the mass of this planet we've discovered. Go into motion. 
um, change its rotational period to 11 days to, because it's essentially equal to its orbit because this particular planet is actually um, tidally locked and then change the um, orbital period to 11 days as well. So now here is our new Proxima Centauri B that is going to be a little bit more Earth-like. Now for it to be Earth-like you would need to have approximately something like 30% iron or maybe 35% iron, the rest should be silicates and maybe also a little bit water. Now, the problem with this simulation though is that this type of a planet would very likely be formed in um, a star system similar to our own um, solar system, but very unlikely to have formed so close to Proxima Centauri. But you never know, it might be actually possible and we might have gotten lucky. Now, as you can see, it's still frozen and that's because we don't actually have any atmosphere on the surface here. If there is no atmosphere, this is what this planet looks like. Not very hospitable, minus 45 degrees Celsius temperature, not a particularly exciting world to visit. If, however, there is a bit of an atmosphere, let's just say even if it's something close to the uh, minimal comfortable atmosphere for us, 0.7 um, atmospheric pressures, then in this case, the world will already have temperature that's going to be over zero degrees Celsius, over the melting point of water. So once again, you're going to have liquid water on the surface, it's going to be a habitable world, and uh, possibly even a world that we can actually settle on. The only thing missing here is the um, magnetosphere, and in this case, the magnetosphere can be actually uh, kind of unpredictable. So maybe this planet has a magnetosphere, just like um, our own Earth, and just like other planets like Jupiter and Saturn, or maybe it doesn't because it doesn't have the required uh, materials on the inside to create the uh, magnetosphere um, that is absolutely necessary for life to survive. And so if there is no magnetosphere, it's very unlikely to be hospitable at all, even though it might actually look Earth-like. The water here will not last for a very long time. Most of the things that we decide to bring here, including, of course, uh, electric equipment that is, we decide to bring here, will very likely be damaged by Proxima Centauri every time it has a flare-up. And these stars, even though they're actually smaller, they do have quite a lot of really powerful flare-ups that may actually cause quite a lot of ionized particles to strike the surface and basically disintegrate liquid water or destroy various electrical equ equipment that we bring to this planet. And so in this case, we basically need to just kind of hope that uh, there's at least a little bit of a magnetosphere because even a little bit of a magnetosphere will actually be uh, enough for us to protect Proxima Centauri B from uh, most of the radiation from uh, Proxima Centauri star. Now, we don't know anything about this planet right now. As a matter of fact, even in 2018, when we actually launched James Webb Telescope, that is possibly going to be able to kind of see um, some of the hints of atmosphere on this planet, even then we might not really know anything about it. And that's because we don't even know how big it is. If we know its actual diameter, if we can somehow see it, although that's technically currently impossible, then we can estimate the density, we can estimate other things, including the atmosphere, including the potential for the magnetosphere. But until we find a way to do that, we don't really know if there is a magnetosphere, we don't really know if there is water on the surface or if it's made up of rock or just uh, and we, of course, don't even know if uh, this planet is actually rocky or by some fluke of nature, if it's possibly a very big gas giant. So here's what would happen if this was an actual gas giant. Um, this would actually turn into a very, very massive steaming and smoking planet that's way, way, way bigger than our Earth. It's also a little bit more extreme looking. And the reason it's smoking is because the um, solar radiation is currently burning away a lot of its atmosphere. So it's actually losing tons and tons of material right now. It's You can kind of see it right here. Mass uh, loss per second is a very, 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 very large number. It's going to lose most of its atmosphere within a few years. Unless, once again, there is magnetosphere. In which case, it's going to lose a lot less but will still actually keep burning a lot of its atmosphere away and potentially become a so-called Ktonian planet about which we've talked about previously. And so anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and give you an idea of what we kind of have discovered about the Proxima Centauri B planet that we are now almost absolutely positive is out there. And we've, uh, this is essentially what we think it might potentially look like or how it might actually behave 
and what we might actually discover on it if we decide to visit Proxima Centauri one day. Now there's only one mission so far that has actually been kind of planned here and that's the mission by the uh, multi-billionaires with the help uh, from Stephen Hawking. Um, who were planning to launch these tiny satellites and use a super powerful laser to propel them to the system. But this would actually take us quite a few decades to reach anyway. And uh, by then, um, most of us will probably either perish or be super, super old to care. But anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And if you still haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button right now. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else educational using video games. And also don't forget, you can support this channel on Patreon and help uh, this channel grow by helping me buy various awesome equipment that will make these videos better. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And let's actually place a few planets in an orbit around this object and possibly see if we can cause some havoc to this system. Uh oh, here comes the explosion. Here's the first one. And here is the big collision that I was hoping for. Oh, look at this beauty. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.